The Temple of Solomon is not mentioned in the Quran, but the Hadiths create incredible as well as contradictory stories about it. Will you explain? I always have to make our listeners aware of facts that are not common knowledge to most people, whether so-called believers or unbelievers. That there is no mention in the Quran of the Temple of Jerusalem, nor of the name Jerusalem. That every single encounter by Muhammad with the angel Gabriel, who was allegedly revealing the Quran to him, was never witnessed by either his wives nor by any of his companions. All we have, and all they ever had, are Muhammad's unverified and unsubstantiated assertions that he did. On the one hand, every single miraculous encounter of Muhammad occurred in the dead of night without any witnesses. The miracles that Moses performs were, on the other hand, witnessed by the whole of the Israelite and Egyptian peoples in broad daylight. Now, let me recite the single verse in the Qur'an, upon which an incredible myth was created, the results of which reverberate 1400 years later in the 21st century. Surah Al-Isra 17.1 Glory to Allah who did take his servant for a journey by night, from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque, whose precincts we did bless, in order that we might show him some of our signs, for he is the one who heareth and sees all things. Subhanul ladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa al ladhi barakna hawlahu li nurihi min ayatina innahu al sami' al basiru. 17.2 We gave Moses the book and made it a guide to the children of Israel, commanding, Take not other than me as disposer of your affairs. Let us together scrutinize and analyze this verse. The very first section, Glory to Allah who did take his servant for a journey by night from the sacred mosque to the furthest mosque, cannot be the words of Allah glorifying himself, but could be attributed to the angel Gabriel. The next section, whose precincts we did bless in order that we might show him some of our signs. The majestic we pertains to Allah and hence this section can be attributed to him. The third section, for he is the one who heareth and seeth all things, is once again about Allah and could have been Gabriel doing the reciting. Hence we have Gabriel reciting first, then Allah, and finally Gabriel. The second section then represents Allah addressing Muhammad directly, which should not have been the case, especially since nowhere in the Quran or Hadiths is there any mention that Muhammad received his inspirations directly from Allah, and if this were the case, what therefore was the need for Gabriel? After all, Moses was addressed directly by Allah as Kalimullah and needed no intermediaries. There is absolutely no indication as to where Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is. Neither is there any word or expression assuming a miraculous event. It is a simple statement that Muhammad was taken on a journey from Mecca to an undisclosed holy destination. No human being can connect this alleged event to any point on earth, let alone Jerusalem. Moreover, the very next verse jumps from the 7th century AD to the 15th century BC without batting an eyelid, although the two subjects have absolutely no relevance to each other. If the event mentioned above were truly miraculous, there would have been more verses to follow, extolling and elaborating upon the subject. Nothing of the kind can be found in the Qur'an. This event presumably occurred just before Muhammad migrated to Medina in 622 AD. For the next 150 years, no one ever connected this event to Jerusalem or anywhere else. Then comes Muhammad ibn Ishaq, and his biography of Muhammad called Sirat Rasulullah, page 181, section The Night Journey and the Ascent to Heaven, as translated by Alfred Guillaume in his monumental the life of Muhammad. Ibn Ishaq was researching, compiling, comparing and contrasting stories that he heard from Muhammad's companions, their descendants or friends and family, to compose his biography of Muhammad. Ibn Ishaq admits that he patched together assorted stories regarding an alleged miraculous journey that Muhammad had on an animal called Burak to Jerusalem, then the seven heavens and back to Mecca in a single night. This becomes one source, among others, of the worst cases of deceptions and contortions of facts and religion 
propagated by the Quran and hadiths that have ever been perpetrated upon the human consciousness since the beginnings of recorded history. It is upon these unfounded and unsubstantiated lies that the Arabs and the followers of Muhammad lay their claim upon Jerusalem. The name of the capital city of the Israelites that was built by King Solomon is mentioned in the Bible, the same Bible that the Quran uses as a witness to its own veracity and divine origin. 1 King 6.1 In the 480th year after the children of Israel's exodus from the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, he built the temple for the Almighty. Jerusalem became and remained the capital of the Israelites and later the kingdom of Judea until its final destruction by the Romans in 135 AD. The only capital and spiritual center of the Israelites and the Jews for almost 1,000 years. Even during the centuries leading to the Arab conquest of the city, Jerusalem remained the singular and most persistent spiritual focus of the Jews and their hope to return from their exile to the land of their birth. I would like to point out to those followers of Muhammad who may be listening that the name of Jerusalem is mentioned 667 times in the Bible, while there exists not a single mention of it in the whole of the Quran. Also, while the followers of Muhammad keep repeating ad nauseum the mantra that it is their third holiest place, they deliberately, willfully and with utter contempt to history, religion and reality ignore the fact that it is the first, foremost and only holy city for the Jews whose capital it has always been. They also deliberately and very conveniently disregard and overlook the fact that it was the hordes of the Arab followers of Muhammad who occupied the city and took it away from the Byzantine Christians when they conquered their empire and subjugated its native peoples. The followers of Muhammad, the aggressors, have the goal and audacity to claim the city which is holy to the Jews and Christians as holy to them also just because Muhammad allegedly had a one-night stand there. The modern followers of Muhammad in their usual attempt to eradicate the histories of their conquered peoples, are now claiming, as well as asserting, that there never was a Temple of Solomon. One of those who spread this obscene lie was the unlamented leader of the PLO, Yasser Arafat. Dear listeners, I have mentioned on several occasions that it is by divine justice that the very hadiths that explain the Quran to the followers of Muhammad are the same that utterly destroy its alleged divine origins. The same is true about the followers of Muhammad who attempt to deform and contort history and reality to conform to their perverted agenda of delegitimizing and or dehumanizing the Christians and Jews and their links to Jerusalem. Let us assume, for instance, that Yasser Arafat and other like-minded Muhammadans are correct that there never was a temple of Solomon. Then these unholy idiots and morons destroy the veracity of the very ahadith that are the second most important legacy of Muhammad since they contain his sunnah. They destroy the ahadith because they contain the very stories about Muhammad's alleged miraculous night journey upon which the whole edifice of their claim to Jerusalem stands. If there was no temple of Solomon, then Muhammad lied and deceived his listeners when he asserted and then described the temple to them. By the way, Muhammad did lie and deceive his mostly illiterate, superstitious and gullible followers since in the days of Muhammad there was no temple of Solomon standing as it had already been destroyed by the Romans almost 570 years earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, so-called believers and unbelievers, Every chapter of our series destroys verse by verse, mantra by mantra, term by term, idea by idea, the alleged veracity and or the divine origins of the Quran and the Hadiths. And we are enormously beholden and indebted to the followers of Muhammad for helping us accomplish our mission.